Hey, how's it going everybody? Welcome back to a brand new video. Today in the temporary lab setup in my room actually. This is a this is a card table, yeah. Very professional laboratory setup, as always. Also, I am wearing very protective gear. Uh, shorts and stuff, very, very good idea. Anyway, today we're going to be messing with uh, this stuff, which is... Um, uh, this is hydrogen peroxide, which I concentrated myself from the store-bought stuff. Uh, in a previous video, link will be up there, and probably in the description. Also, the uh, Josh the Nerd... Uh, Josh's lab playlist will be up there as well if you want to check out more videos. Anyway, back to what we're doing today. I was searching through my uh, chemical, uh, uh, my chem my chemical storage up there, and I uh, I remembered this, but I didn't actually see how far I could get the concentration. So we're gonna be seeing if we can up the concentration today. If we can, great. If not, then we'll know that about 30% is the max. Now, over on my computer, I have that, which is the density slash specific gravity. Specific gravity is basically just density of uh, hydrogen peroxide solutions. As you can see on the graph, it gives you the density in uh, grams, wait, what? Yeah, grams per milliliter um, with uh, the concentration of H2O2. So, uh, yeah. So, the higher the concentration as a percentage, the um, the denser it is. Which makes sense because uh, hydrogen peroxide is more dense than water, right? So, that makes sense. Now, what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be taking this hydrogen peroxide and we're going to be determining the concentration based off its specific gravity which actually isn't a very good way of doing it because you lose a lot of sig figs and it's not very accurate but it's better than nothing um, if you if you are doing this yourself and you have and you really want to figure out the exact concentration with very high precision then a titration would be way better but I don't have the equipment for that right now so we're gonna be going with this method so what we're gonna do is we're gonna put on some gloves here because uh, safety is number two priority on the Josh Denner YouTube channel. A few warnings before we start. Make sure you're wearing safety uh, equipment, even if it's basic. Um, I could I could do way better by actually wearing actual equipment, but uh, YOLO, am I right? Um, when storing this stuff, put it in a bottle that absorbs a decent amount of light, like an amber bottle. The reason why it's stored in opaque bottles, like if you went to a Dollar General, your hydrogen peroxide is going to be in an opaque bottle so it uh, absorbs the light and the light doesn't actually go into the peroxide because hydrogen peroxide decomposes quite a bit. Pressure will build up inside these bottles and so if you're storing hydrogen peroxide make sure to put it in a dark area and also make sure to relieve the pressure uh, I'd recommend every week to every few weeks at least that's how I've been doing it. I, I It's not going to do it now because I did it uh, like 10 minutes ago but I opened up the bottle, right? And it let out a lot of pressure. So if you have enough pressure buildup in these, then uh, you're gonna have a uh, bomb. Be careful. That's not what we're about, right? So yeah. So there's that. This was concentrated, let's see, a few months ago. So hopefully it'll work for what we're doing. What we're gonna do is we're gonna, we're gonna measure the density, aka the specific gravity of this. And then we're gonna heat it for some time. Then we're going to measure the specific gravity of that, and if it if the concentration is higher, here's 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 the hypothesis. All right, the concentration of this should be higher after heating it. So that's the that's the idea. If it works or not, we're going to see. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to measure the the uh, volume and the weight of this. So we can calculate density. All right. Probably won't need goggles for this, but whatever. Good practice to have it on anyway. All right. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take. Let's see. This is about. Can't remember how many. You know, we're gonna use the 50 milliliter graduated cylinder just for. Um, just, just in case. 
52.9 grams. We're gonna tear that. I'm gonna write that down actually on the chalkboard. So I'm gonna tear that. We're gonna add the peroxide. Very carefully. Oh, look at that. It's kind of fizzing. Actually, let me observe this for a second. Huh. Okay, so there's a lot of bubbling going on. So we've agitated it. And we're at 40.1 grams. I'd say 39.5 milliliters. We're going to go over the calculations. Ignore the mess on the, um, on the table here. All right, so we have 52.9 grams, which is our graduated cylinder, so um, that doesn't really matter. So now we can do the math. So let's find density. Density equals mass divided by volume. That's pretty common knowledge. So our mass, our mass is 40.1 grams and our volume is 39.5 milliliters. Oh, wow, I should really clean this area up. Which with our density, uh, I'll just write over here actually. Uh, density will equal 1.0151. So that is our current density. So if that changes, that number changes there, we should have um, a different concentration, okay? So let's just keep that in mind. Now we're back over at the station and I'm going to pour this right into here. Just like so. Make sure to get as much in there as possible. I would wash this, but it's gonna mess with the calculation. So we're just gonna have to deal with a little bit of percent error in our math, which is fine. Get my enough. We're going to crank up the heat on the hot plate and get her heated up. So the idea with this is that what we're going to do is we are going to, um, we're going to heat this up, right? And we're going to boil off some of the water and hopefully that'll increase the concentration. I could run a distillation for this. I don't think that's necessary. One thing we have to be careful of though is that if we heat this too much, it's going to decompose the hydrogen peroxide. Through that, it's going to add even more air to the math, but we're just, we're just going to live with that. So I'm actually curious myself to see if the density does change. So that'll be interesting to look at. It's been a few minutes, and I've been monitoring the temperature, which is really important. Oh. Ooh. See a little bit of vapor rising? Um, yeah, it's getting hot. Now uh, make sure if you're doing this to monitor the temperature because it's very important. Because water, as you know, boils at 100 degrees centigrade, but a hydrogen peroxide boils at one around 150 degrees centigrade. So the only reason why we're able to do this in the first place is because they have they they differ in um, uh, boiling points. Currently at about 60 degrees centigrade. Okay, the solution is boiling quite vigorously. But I think that's only two things. I think it's just A, the water boiling, and the and B, the hydrogen peroxide decomposing. Because there's no way that it's that the hydrogen peroxide's boiling right now. Because we're only sitting at about 90 degrees centigrade. I mean we could take it off now, but it's only been like 15 minutes tops. Uh you know what? That's boiling quite a bit. But I, again, I'm just guessing it's decomposition of the hydrogen peroxide. You know what, we're just gonna leave it for a while and see what happens. I'll put the, I'll turn the heat back up actually. I'm now going to change my hypothesis because I don't think that this is gonna get very much more concentrated because we're gonna lose a lot more hydrogen peroxide doing this. So our results are not going to be as black or white as you may, as you may think. We're probably gonna get a mixture of both sides because Yes, we are reducing the water content, but we're also reducing the hydrogen peroxide content from decomposition. 
So I guess we'll just see what happens. I'm curious, man. Okay, so it's been about 20 to 30 minutes since we first started the experiment, and the volume of the solution has been reduced to quite a significant amount. And so I think that's actually where we're going to stop, and we're going to... Oh, sorry about that. My, uh, my camera just decided to not work for a second there, whatever. So there is our beaker. It's cooled off for quite some time. It's cool enough that I can hold it quite well. And uh, there is our solution. So now we can redo the calculations and see if the density has changed at all. I didn't bother uh, drying it out because the little amount of hydrogen peroxide here really shouldn't mess up our math at all. I just want to see if the, number, the numbers change at all. I'm not really here to do a full scale calculation, but we can do that later. So I'm going to tear that, and we're going to add this very carefully. It's probably where gloves while doing this, by the way. Okay. Like so. We're sitting at 15.6. Volume is at about, let's see, so that would be 15... So I would say about 14.9 milliliters. You can redo the math. I'll bring the camera over. So those are our new numbers right there. What we're going to do is we're going to do density equals mass divided by volume. Mass 15.6 grams. Volume of 14.9 milliliters. So... Our new density, 15.6 divided by 14.9. Oh, and would you look at that? Our new density is 1.0469, three significant figures. And so we went from, move those test tubes, our, our initial density was 1.02. And our new density is 1.05. So that means we have a difference of 0 0.03 grams per milliliter of density. And so there you go. more we heat up, the more concentrated it gets. And again, that's that's a very, very small amount. And I also had a very low amount of peroxide here. And uh, yeah, that's basically all I have for today. So thanks for watching this video and uh, look forward to some more in the future. Have a good one.